welcome in to Meet Us on Mill, the PHNX Sun Devils post game show brought to you by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top rated sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and leave us a five star review. The chat was already popping. Thank you, everybody that is commenting, following along, liking, subscribing, and all that. I'm Shane Diefenbach, joined by Sean DePaz. Hit him with a four up, baby. How you feeling? I'm feeling terrific i don't know what i'm yeah. feeling i'm feeling golden yeah i'm feeling uh ab- better than i expected to be honest yeah. with you <laughs> like i'm feeling pretty, yeah. i'm feeling pretty good well let's just get into the most important part let's open our beers because yes. fans left at halftime to do that on mill speaking um, of golden feeling golden lager nice fantastic four peaks definitely a sponsor um let's take it let's take our first sip huh huh first victory beer of the year oh so good. Josh Hunt already in the chat saying we win the Rose Bowl. Hey, hey. hey. Why not us? Why not us? Hashtag exactly. why not us? <laughs> yeah. Um, Joe in the chat saying this ain't the same without the studio. I know. We're, I know. We're, we're, we're back Just so wait. soon, I promise. I promise we'll be back. Yeah. Shout time. out Mike we Luke. Oklahoma State. Yeah. Shout out Mike Luke. The haters fuel us. Yeah. They fuel us. They only strive to make us better. Sean, ASU gets a victory 40 to 3. Today, my prediction was pretty close. I'm not going to lie. I just needed a couple more Carter Brown field goals <laughs> to get there. My goodness, the man. We'll get into all of the individual stats, but he was awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. Lou Groza award winner incoming. <laughs> yeah. Put him on the watch uh, list. Well, overall, just immediate reactions from this game. If I were to ask you what sentence encapsulates ASU's performance and what you saw tonight, what would it be? I mean, I, like I said, better than expected. Mm-hmm. I like I I tweeted before the the game. Like I needed them. They they should dominate this game, and they dominated more than I think any of us expected. Like none of us expected them to hold NAU to only one field goal. Um, yeah, like it, it was dominant in every aspect. Everyone like no one no one stood out as being like, well, they have some things to work on. Like there's mistakes. The, the offensive line could have been better at points, I guess, but like, but also at sometimes it was very good. It was amazing. Especially yeah. the left side of the offensive line. You saw some of those runs that specifically Xavier was making. Were, it were terrific. Everyone did their job. Everyone took advantage of the opportunities they got, which is another thing that we had said before, even Tevin white coming in and getting 16 yards on his first career carry. Yeah. Like everyone, did their job that it was just it was exactly what you wanted from this you were like i think the biggest concern right was that all of these guys kept coming into this team they didn't know each other that well a lot mm-hmm. of new pieces how are they going to mesh they meshed immediately like yeah. it, 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 it you couldn't it looked like a team that had been together for a year or two uh um, yeah it was amazing and we'll talk about the um the helm with emory jones and all of that he did tonight but i really enjoyed the fact that they kept him in until late in the first fourth yeah. quarter um it, it it shows you that he has confidence not only in his running ability which we'll get to but also just him his ability to stay composed and he really led this team tonight um he was fantastic uh, just getting into some negatives to get this out of the way first because i i do want to just be positive for this whole time because it was a positive performance yeah this is this is something to look forward to um, but just a couple negatives. Chat, don't hate me. First off, obviously a slower start. Um, not yes. the best first quarter by any means. There was a point where NAU could have taken the lead seven to three when they were driving, but they didn't, and they didn't score the rest of the game after they got a field goal. Um, and the other negative I'd say was early tackling was pretty bad. There were some missed tackles toward the end of the yes. game, and that's to be expected. That's probably one of the main things you can always count on to get fixed later in the year is missed tackling. It's discipline. But speaking of discipline, Sean, there were there was one false start tonight. I know <laughs> there was one. I know, and it happened like relatively early. So I I saw it and I was like, oh god, like yeah. the, I, I felt like I was in an earthquake. I was just like, oh god, it's happening again. Yeah. And then it didn't it didn't happen again. Like it was it was very like, and I think that's part of the benefit of having so many new people, right? Like you don't really have that carryover. Yeah. From last year, where penalties were such a problem, everyone coming in kind of a, a clean slate. Um, yeah, that was, yeah. Uh, I think, the most reassuring thing is like, is obviously they were going to dominate, they needed to play clean, and that's more or less what yeah. they did. Talk about all the 51 players that left, and there are so many new players that have come into this program, um, or 51 new players coming in. Obviously, there's so much turnover. But the biggest turnover, obviously, is Emory Jones. And we have to talk about him now because this is the first time we saw him in action in an ASU uniform. 
Um, we actually have a video of the touch, the second rushing touchdown he had that we'll go ahead and play right now and talk a little bit over. First is the Xavier Valade run that was just state of the art, just one of the best runs I'd seen um, from an ASU running back in a while. Yeah. I mean, obviously Rashad White esque, patient, and then just burst of speed, so explosive. But this run, this this read option where he just takes it right up the middle shows you how much of a different runner he had, he is than Jaden. You know, Jaden was really fast, and I, I I hate that we have to talk about it, but we just do. Yeah. Same number, same type of kind of quarterback. But Jaden Daniels ran, you know, safe almost, where it was effortless, and he kind of glided. Emory Jones runs like a damn running back. Emory Jones runs like he's hairs on fire. He wants he 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 wants those extra yards, and it's a little scary. But for some reason, a runner that runs that hard, you you're less scared for than a guy like Jaden who runs upright. You know, you yeah. don't want him to no, get chopped underneath. He he's 100%. safe with his it's it's his dives are almost like slides, and I love it. Yeah, no, I think that's a, a you get a situation with a lot of quarterbacks where they don't know they're running, but they don't really know how to run. Like they they aren't ready for contact. They're just running to try and run away from everybody. Yeah. Emery is running like a running back almost. Like he, he is, wants he to is, smoke. He's ready for the contact. Yeah, and, and that's how. Um, I mean, with the, other than sliding, like that's how you stay safe. You have to more or less brace yourself. Yeah. And the, and the, this was the most exciting part of the night for me as watching him run, even if it was just for a couple yards, because in training camp, like we've seen in fall camp for these past. Two months, you know, you see his speed, you see how talented he is, but you don't see him running for contact. You don't see him running in in full contact. And this mm -hmm. showed what type of runner he is and how fearless he is, especially just against NAU. Like, I mean, I, it worries me to some extent, but yeah. at, at some point you have to put your body on the line. It's college football. And, and I know you don't want your quarterback to get injured, but he runs smart. He runs – Yeah, it, it's organized chaos, and I absolutely love it. Emory Jones, such a great performance tonight. Um, yeah. We'll get into his individual numbers in a second. Um, a lot on the ground, obviously, uh, and there was another guy that was really good on the ground that we'll get to later in the show. But Emory Jones, 13 of 18, 152 yards, no touchdowns, no interceptions, but on the ground, 11 carries, 46 yards, two TDs. Sean, how does a man – that starts at quarterback puts up 40 points by only attempting 18 passes in this era of college football. <laughs> I mean, you're playing a bad team first yeah. off. Like, yeah. like that's one thing, like I, I don't want to ran in the parade mm -hmm. a little bit, but we do have to keep it in perspective. 100%. NAU, NAU is not a good football team. Yeah. Like by comparison, they're a good FCS team, I suppose, or uh, they're in a good conference, I guess, but they're not a good football team at, at this platform. Uh, regard, despite what U of A might tell you. Um, but like he was tactical like like you look at both Xavier and Ngata they both averaged seven and a, seven mm -hmm. plus yards per rush Emery obviously was effective throwing he he was smart with his passing we talked about it at halftime yeah it, it's the decisions he made he went through his progressions he he he, he ran when he needed to, not yeah. because he, he's that kind of quarterback. He's not a run first guy. He's just as capable of running. Um, Wayne again in the chat saying, if NAU isn't a good football team, what does that make you of a bad? A really um, bad I have a really fun stat to share at the end of the show. So please stay tuned until Totri gets here because it'll shock some people. Um, that's a little bit of a teaser. Um, and speaking of teasers, college football is back, baby. Uh, you can make your first bet on DraftKings. Bet just $5. Get $200 in risk free bet because college football is here. And the NFL is approaching. A week from today, we get the Bills and the Rams. So go ahead and download it. Use that promo code PHNX when you sign up. Bet just $5 on any football game. Get $200 in free bets instantly. Sean, did you make any money tonight? No, I lost. I bet the over did not hit. Oh. NAU let me down. <laughs> um, I, 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 I expected I, them to get at least a touchdown. I threw one coin on the over and two coins on the spread, so I came out and profited. We oh, love nice. it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we love it. Uh, yeah, download it again. Promo code PHNX. $5. Get $200 in free bets. Official sports betting partner of the NFL DraftKings Sportsbook. Age and eligibility restrictions apply. See those show notes for more details. Um, back to Emery real quick. My favorite part of the night, and this is something that doesn't really matter who you're playing. He is so patient with the ball. I don't think he forced one pass. Yeah, and as you said, really patient, good decision making. But you could physically see him going through his reads. He, But he first looks at the deep shot. There were a couple plays where Charles Hall or Andre Johnson ran post routes. 
and he would he, he would look and look and look and see if he was, they were going to get separations, and he didn't. And his check down was like a 15 yard in route to to yeah. Elijah Badger, and and, and it, it just makes me so happy that that's something you didn't really see from Jaden. He was very set on who he would look at the first time. Um, and we the, the chat is just filled with Jaden slander, <laughs> and I'm really excited to see him play. Um, is he the starting quarterback? We don't know. <laughs> He's definitely going to be the starter, but yeah. I'm excited to see him play nonetheless. Um, what was your biggest takeaway from Emory versus Jaden, you would say? Uh, I mean, it was kind of like I said, just you have two r- quarterbacks who are capable runners, and I feel like at times with Emory, his – or with at times with Jaden, his preference was to run. He would run mm-hmm. without going through his progressions and stuff like that. He had a sign of, of trouble. He would run. Emery, I mean, there was one point in the first half where he stayed in the pocket and took a hit and still and still delivered a throw. I don't remember if the pass was completed, but it was completed. Yeah, and he he he, t- he got hit as he threw. He only ran a few times when he needed to or when it was designed for him to run. Like that, I think is such a good. Uh, such a good sign because I think that was the biggest concern for a lot of people with Emery is is like oh he's a run guy he might yep. how good is he able how good is he as, as a passer he's a very good passer at least he's he was got tonight. some zip man and he's got some zip and and he also can run when he feels like he needs yeah. to yep not because he wants to it's not when he feels presence he does stay in the yeah. pocket and that's yeah. something JD five really didn't do got a couple fun comments here first Brendan Miller from CHGO Cubs saying he is a Sun Devil alum. I did not know that Flork's up, baby. Happy to have you watching. Thanks for watching. And then Craig, our own very own Craig Morgan from PHNX. With all the chaos swirling around the program and all the hits he has taken, I suspect Herm to be uber dialed in this season. That is a very fun storyline to look out for. And yes, that's definitely true, especially with the Urban Meyer news that Urban came Meyer, out today. Baby. Urban Meyer news, we should say lightly. Um, the the anonymous that. source. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> very, very interesting. Something that's hilarious because we have joked about that um, before. Sean, if there was anything from tonight that could be considered a turning point, do you have anything in mind? Oh man, a turning point <laughs> <laughs> kickoff. My, my turning point I, would definitely be the, 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 the snap, the fumbled snap from the yeah. field goal to tie the game that the, after yeah. that it was over. Yeah, it was over. Uh, speaking of, of special team snap foods, the weirdest thing I think I've ever seen in a college football game when the NAU return man had the ball just bounce off his face yeah, and go, and out, go of out of bounds. That was – I literally said out loud, what, what now, now what happens? Because because I didn't know yeah, – I don't is, know what the rule is Is this there. an illegal kickoff? Is, is it, it a, a touchback? Is it, yeah, I, had I, no like, idea. I, I didn't know. It was – it was. I had never seen anything like that. But, yeah, no, that's a good point. I think that was definitely – probably the turning point if there was one like the game was never really in doubt for me although i will say that there was a point like you said earlier earlier whether they could have taken the lead and i was like oh my god is mm-hmm. this there's no way this happens right yeah, it, yeah. it stuck into my head um but i, I yeah I, the game was over when it started i think but yeah that, that fumble just showed that this was ASU's game from the get, basically. Yeah, Diego asking what the Urban Meyer news was. It really, it, it wasn't much of anything. <laughs> Dan Patrick just said that he, there might be a world where Urban Meyer could land up at land. He, yeah, he said he had he a source. He could be a fit. Yeah, but what is the source? Story. What is the source going to tell you? Like, hey, yeah. I know we just started the football season, but Herm's getting fired at the end, and we're hiring yeah. Urban Meyer. Like, that is for tomorrow's show. We'll yeah, get a lot sure. more into that, I'm sure, um, as well as talk a lot more about this game. But for tonight, uh, there's a lot of people on mail. We're meeting on Mill. If you had to give bottle service to a player tonight, Sean, who is it? I mean, got to be the one. Everyone one. was performance, but there was there's one right answer here. X gonna give it to you. It, it's Xavier Valade. I mean, like I said, he averaged what seven point six, seven point seven yards per rush. He uh-huh. was just so effective. And and I, you know, I don't know about you, hadn't watched a whole lot of Wyoming Wyoming football, um, <laughs> so I I hadn't really seen him play in in a game before. And just how explosive he is, it was was so impressive. It, I and then you throw in the one two punch of him and Ingata. Uh, it's just, uh, yeah, he was just yeah. so so impressive tonight. And there's a, a lot to be happy with, but I think he was the peak of that. Yeah, it, it it shows you what a really explosive and talented running back can do with holes. And I know it's yes. really easy to create holes against a team like NAU. I'm not saying this is going to continue the whole year, but it's good when there are holes to hit. He's going to hit them hard. And I feel like yeah. the even though ASU rushed for what like how many yards total like almost two hundred over two hundred yards yeah even though that happened I feel like they still got unlucky 
uh, rushing the ball. There were still some holes they they read a little wrong or they ran into yeah. the wrong guy or just got tackled. You know, Daniel got it a couple times where he almost got to the edge and wasn't able to get there because of a shoestring tackle. And same with X. So, um, yeah, that's really interesting. What else is interesting is I know everybody calls him X. I know that's what everybody calls him, and his full name is Xavier, but nobody calls him that. If you were watching on Pac-12 Network tonight, every single time they called him X, obviously, but also on the graphics, it was just X Valade. There was nothing yeah. else. Just, and yeah. it wasn't X dot Valade. It was X Valade and full names were underneath them. Very interesting. It was, yeah, it was one of the first things, like all the commentators were calling him X and I'm like, do you know him like that? Like, I was like, I mean, go. I, I think Xavier is such a hard name, but then again, like I said, I'm going to tweet X, go and give it to you like over under 800 times uh, this season. It's yeah. it's a pretty hard nickname, and it's a given when your name starts with an X. Yeah, why not us? Can we pull up that graphic one more time? I just want to look at bottle service toe tree. Jacob brought it up in the chat. I just I love this graphic so much. Look at how happy he is. Um, he's currently talking to Herm Edwards and the rest of the available guys, some players maybe after the game, getting some updates. Hopefully on Joey Ramos. Prayers up to him. Hope he is okay. Um, and just getting the lowdown on the game tonight, and we'll, we'll join later to talk about that. Were there any guys you would have considered for bottle service tonight, Sean? Um, I, I mean, obviously, Emery was terrific. I think when you look especially at the, the first quarter specifically, on the offensive side, Messiah Swinson looked incredible. Just Amazing. such a big target. He was finding open space. He looked really good. Um, and if they can utilize a tight end like that, it's going to be that's going to be exciting. And then defensively, Merlin's energy just was incredible. Yeah, um, I, I, you know, I noticed that immediately. Just the energy mm -hmm. he was bringing, um, and so I, I wanted those two guys. Uh, but again, everyone that was involved played really yeah. well. I, like I had mentioned earlier, the left side of that offensive line is offensive line is a little unsung. Is always a little unsung, but they were incredible. Like they, they, the, some of the holes that they were giving um, in Gata and, and Valade were massive. So. Yeah. There was a they, lot to be happy with. They were big. Um, also, Connor or Kyle Soley had a great yeah. game. Connor had a couple tackles as well. But I think one of the biggest things, the most underrated things in college football, is when you don't notice that corners are playing. Um, yes. When you don't hear their name being called. Because I don't know if they took one deep shot tonight. Like no, I, I was going to say, how many times did you hear? Like there was no like big completions. Like they obviously completed some passes, but uh, I mean, and we'll get to the numbers at some point. But like. They didn't really do anything like offensively at all. Really, yeah. So. Well, let's let's just get right into it. Let's look at the numbers um, from tonight and see the discrepancy. Sean, what's the biggest number that sticks out to you? I mean, the twenty-three rushing yards for NAU. That just goes to show how <laughs> dominant that front seven yeah. was. And yeah, you heard every name basically, mm -hmm. like every name that we've talked to, talked about, all from like obviously Nesta and and Omar to to all the way down to. Uh, hall like it, it both the moors like mm -hmm. everyone was kind of getting involved in the front seven they just there was so many like tackles for losses or meeting guys at the line of scrimmage that, that they were just dominant in that aspect of the game which is good right because there's always been concerns about the secondary which was also really impressive in this game but you need that the front seven to be dominant and they were in this game yeah definitely um yeah final obviously 40 to 3 267 rushing yards to 23 152 passing yards to 96. Um, ASU only surrendering 119 yards total on the day, which is just fantastic. Um, yeah, the defense was was good. Uh, I, I wouldn't go as far as to say great because of some missed tackles, but yeah. I mean, the, it's not easy to hold somebody under 150 yards total, no matter who they are. Yeah, and um, I mean, you think about what those numbers would have looked like if they had made all of their tackles. They probably they yeah. would have had them, held them under 100 yards, Yeah, which definitely. is incredible. Yeah, and you saw that tackling starting to tighten up near the end of the game. So I'm not too worried about that. I, you just worry about it when there's an X factor on the field um, like they have um, in Stillwater. You know, you miss yeah. a tackle and then it's an 80-yard rushing touchdown that probably should have been stuffed at the line. Yeah. But for now, you know, the, the, the front seven, specifically the front four, Nesta was in on every single run, every inside zone that was called. He had a hand on the ball carrier. Um, and yeah, it was just, it, it was really fun to watch the, the defense tonight was pretty solid, I would say. Um, and it was good to see, uh, another ASU linebacker get an interception because somewhat for some reason they love that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, I, that, that, that one pick was, and I saw, I feel like we should address this. Like someone commented earlier and you and I talked about this, that there was a handful of people who were like, 
oh no, the penalty taking away the pick six. Like the like we said, that first one wouldn't have happened if it wasn't yeah. for the penalty. Like it was, he took a shot because of the offsides. Uh, the second one is tough, but it didn't take away the interception. Like it was, it was a block in the back. That tends to happen on returns. Like it's relatively frequent. So obviously not ideal, but um, yeah, that's that that one the actual interception though kicked up in the air. Yeah, DJ Taylor, DJ yeah. Taylor made that play happen. Yeah. Uh, this was one of the first times you saw him playing consistently on the defensive side of the ball, and not a lot of times his name was called, um, which is again great. Uh, yeah. There just wasn't a lot of separation tonight in general. So. I thought the secondary had a th- strong game. I thought the Markham Twins had a strong game. Um, yeah. I think j- everybody overall played really well. So it, it's it's yeah. really exciting to see. Um, as you guys know, we're sipping on Four Peaks as always after a dub. It's a great it's a great beer for a dub and even a great beer for a loss. Hopefully, we won't have to pop any more any, any losing beers here soon. Um, but we got a yeah. tough one next week. Uh, but right now, if you go to Four Peaks. And you go to gophnext.com, you can enter our Toast of the Month sweepstakes to win a $50 Four Peaks gift card. PHNX, sure to your choice, and an annual membership to gophnext.com. So go there or click the link in the show notes for more details. We're also there every final Wednesday of each month, and we might be doing some pregame tailgate activities there. So keep your eyes peeled on Twitter at phnext underscore Sun Devils. But if you're going to drink the beer, got to be 20 on or older, and please enjoy it responsibly. Also, it wouldn't be a dub. If we didn't eat it and no dub tastes better than a dub with burrito express burrito express Ooh. has been fantastic to us. Daniel and has been fantastic to burrito express and vice versa. Cause he was fueled by burrito express tonight and he looked fast. This is, this is, this is not factual, but I think burrito express might make you faster. Sean, do you agree? I mean, in a way like you can't really run fast unless you're properly fueled. There's a lot of good protein in burrito express like like i had said this to you before i hadn't hadn't had burrito express until yeah. uh, right around this partnership starting i got there i was surprised to see which is probably unfair to burrito express but i was surprised to see that they were actually like chopping up bacon cracking eggs like this isn't a taco bell burrito like they're making real food I, you have to think it translates a little bit to to and got us averaging seven yards per rush in game yeah. one i'm just saying speaking of that tempe location go check out their custom burrito express themed First responder shirt with all proceeds going to the Tunnels to Towers organization. They're only $25, and they'll hook you up with a free burrito as well. So get them while they're hot. Only 100 shirts available, and them Johns are fire. Check it out on their Twitter. Um, yeah, uh, AJ Wade in the chat saying Lumberjacks running wind sprints down rural right now. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, and, and he's giving me props. Central Michigan did cover plus 22 or plus 21 and a half today. Uh, or was it 22 and a half? I think I took it at plus 21 and a half, but they covered regardless. I think they only lost by 20 uh, with a sneaky backdoor cover against next week's opponent, Oklahoma State. Um, so, yeah, happy about that. Hopefully, Oklahoma State isn't too mad about the backdoor cover. Um, while we're waiting on Toe Tree, Sean, if you had to pick something you need to see next week, I know we're getting ahead of ourselves, but that you didn't see tonight to win in Stillwater, what would it be? I mean, you mentioned the tackles. I, I think, I think. One thing that was kind of lacking, I guess, in this game is like those like, oh, shit plays. Like, obviously, yeah. there was that like the Xavier run that we had watched earlier, but there was, you know, they had a couple opportunities to go mm-hmm. deep and they they missed out on those one because of, it was a little underthrown and there was great defense and it was kind of dropped. And then obviously the blatant miss pass interference. So uh, some of those, right, like it says they have some deep bombs that kind of keep the Oklahoma State defense on their toes. Um, that's something I would really like to see. And then, yeah, like, like you said, the, the tackling, they need to, they can't give up. I think that was something you saw with Oklahoma state today, um, especially in that first half, obviously central Michigan made it close, but they pinned the um, Chippewas within their own two yard line and they got a safety. And at that point it looked like the game was over. So, yeah. and it basically uh, was, and it was, yeah. Right. So that's one thing is like, you can't make a mistake where it's like you, you give all that momentum to Oklahoma state, especially in Stillwater. Like you, you have to be on from the get have to play a, a damn near perfect game, which is essentially what they did tonight. So, so yeah, that's really what it is for me. Yeah. Um, I know I said, I'm done being negative, but another negative from tonight, I would say it would be a little bit of the play calling. I thought Glenn Thomas did a pretty good job. I got, dude, I got so fired up. When I think it was the first or second play of the game, the um, the boot out um, RPO kind of thing where 
um, X was trailing behind him and it was just a swing pass out uh, to, I, th- I want to say Andre Johnson. Oh, beautiful. Like you never saw that last year. Mm-hmm. You barely ever saw that a, a design rollout from the shotgun. It was, it was awesome. And then there were just a couple questionable things like on their first drive when they settled for a field goal, thought they were being too conservative, conservative, which is a little weird against NAU. I think you can yeah. attribute that to our big guys are bigger or better and bigger than yours. So let's just, put, let's just run it down their throats, which is fair. But you know, three straight runs isn't really the best, especially after you hit two really nice shot plays in, in, uh, to Messiah Swinson to get there. Um, so I like, I would have liked to see, I, to me, I just don't understand why every single call inside of the 10 isn't just a fade to Messiah Swinson or a yeah, run honestly. across the linebackers face to Messiah Swinson. Like, yeah. So I think the play calling, big ass man. yeah, the play calling needs to be a little bit better, but for the most part, I thought Glenn Thomas did a great job. I thought Donnie did a great job as well. Um, not, you know, never too high, never too low. Um, just really strong. And the, and it started to bend a little bit, and then it, there was nothing. They didn't give him an inch. So from a play-calling perspective, they thought it was solid, but, but solid's not going to win you a game in Stillwater against Oklahoma State next week. So, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll see on that. Um, let's talk about the wide receivers a bit because, you know, before the this, this game and before fall camp and before the depth chart came out, we had no idea what we were going to see and the target share we were going to see. I think it's pretty clear who the guys they're going to roll with are. Um, aside from Asai, because we talked about him a lot, um, from a wide receiver standpoint, who stood out to you the most? I mean, Andre for sure. Like you mentioned, out just he looks big. Like I, I feel like that's their guy. Where you, you, you they like he's just he's got yeah. that size. And then I, I mean, hats off to you, like Elijah Badger. Like he Come made a, 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 a few solid plays there. Led the team it's, in receptions. Yeah, like. Everyone kind of really stood out, right? Right. Like the the one thing I was like, there was one point where there was a ball thrown short to uh, Cam Johnson later in the game, and I was like, oh, I hadn't heard his name at all. So mm-hmm. like, you know, kind of the probably unrealistic expectations we had when we spoke to him, and he after he first transferred here, like, you know, you kind of want to see him contribute a little more, I guess. But um, yeah, I feel like all of all the guys that like really got time like they looked really good like ltc said hall looked as advertised like he he was fast like, what is that, like an end around or whatever that he had at one point yeah. where he was just he just he looked like that guy so I, I like kind of the versatility i think of the the receiving core i feel like you have a, a few different kinds of receiver yeah which is good i think 22 yard end around that it, it was really nice there's just, these these receivers are really good in space yeah. um elijah badger four reception 38 yards andre johnson three for 36 um, Brian Thompson only one for seven. Besides Swenson three for fifty, we went over. Um, I did just want to talk about a couple of the the balls that didn't quite land for Emery. There was one where he skipped one of his few incompletions where he skipped a little bit. That's to be expected. Um, you can't. Okay, David wrote in this chat making the exact same joke he made to us today. I'm going to give you another <laughs> thumbs down. Um, he said he hauled ass on that play. Thank you, David Rodish. Um, but the, the one that stood out to me was the deep ball. I believe it was to Brian Thompson at the start of the game, I think on the first drive, um, where they just barely got back in time. Um, and I think he put it perfectly, but the corner made a really good job of recovering. It was on a double move. Um, mm-hmm. Just w- th- That was kind of a question mark for me with Emery, is is the deep ball going to be as good as Jaden's? Because Jaden's deep ball was, was very solid at yeah. times, and, and he showed flashes of crazy arm talent. And I think we have that in Emory. Would you disagree? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't think we saw enough of it for me to necessarily say he's going to be as good as Jaden. But I think it's undoubt, undoubtedly that he's capable of making plays like that down the field. Like he definitely has that in him, which again, the story all the time when you get a guy that's known for running, the question's always there if he can throw the ball. And I think he, sh- he showed tonight at all levels that he's fully capable of, of making plays plays with his arm um so yeah like i said i don't know if he's as good as Jaden yet like i can't make that statement definitively yet but he is definitely capable of making plays like that yeah um well let's take one more break before we get let tow tree back in here um we got a new sponsor guys it's the game time app game time is the hottest new ticketing site that makes it easier than ever to score the best deals on tickets to sports concerts and shows save up to 60 percent off 
on tickets when you buy tickets at the last minute. Um, it's great for you procrastinators out there. Sean, I know you love this app. I know you, you've used it in the past. I've used it a couple times. Um, it's, what, what, what's your experience with it for D-backs games, right? Yeah, I literally like I'll, I'll walk up because like the thing is about D-backs games, like, you know, that stadium's never full, mm-hmm. right? Like, so you wait a few, you wait. I, I, I park my car, I hop out the car and as I'm walking from the parking garage to the stadium, I pull up the game time app. It is, it's literally the only ticket buying app that I have on my, on my phone. I'm not going to pull it out cause that'll be really bad audio. Um, but it, it's just, it's, it's just great. I, I don't know how else to explain it. You get cheap tickets. Like the ad, the ad says up to 60% off Last yeah. tickets. You can't ask for any more. I also use it, it for rising tickets. Probably use it for Cardinals tickets this year. Can definitely use it for ASU yeah, tickets. Yeah, for sure. Um, if you love PHNX, then you'll love Game Time. The best way to support us is by buying tickets through the link in the description or in the show notes. If you're listening on audio, they will be there. So make sure to go ahead and do that before you get tickets to your next game. Um, all right, well, let's get into my favorite part. And it's back, guys. Finally, I get to do one of these. It's time for the lyric of the game. Da, 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 da. We really need a jingle. I got to make yeah. one. I'll, I'll make yeah. one soon. Um, all right, tonight's lyric of the game comes from Glaive, a song by Glaive called Astrid. And all it is is, oh, my God, I can't imagine. And, of course, that is in reference to last year. Um, U of A lost to this team, guys. And I know all of the U of A fans are going to want to say it's different. We have a lot of recruits and freshmen. I don't give a toot. The, yeah. the, that means nothing to me now because I can't I, – I literally can't imagine – Look, ASU might not have the greatest season. Um, th- this might just be a fluke. You know, Emory might not look look good against Oklahoma State, but at least we're a competent football program. Um, so, couldn't be me. Yeah, I just it's hard to imagine. Like, it's just it's just wild to me that, like, if you look at the athletic article we talked about on the show uh, last week or whatever it was. There's they, they, so they predicted the ASU to win three games. So like the, this is one of their, one of their three, apparently um, like a, how much better can you get in one year? B like, doesn't change the fact that you lost to NAU. Like you were supposed to be a power five team. And you lost to NAU. Couldn't be us. Um, I was really kind of hoping deep inside that your lyric was going to be, it's going down. I'm yelling timber Kesha. Oh, Sean. But, um, God, I got to start consulting you. That's really yeah, good. Um, I, I have we'll, we'll you know. save that for Stanford. I was yeah, actually going to text you, but I couldn't put my pride aside. I was like, I want this to be my thing. That's um, fair. So next time I'll put my pride aside because that's a really good one. Um, so since Totri is still in the presser, um, I, I, I just I, I was going to bring this up as the lyric of the game. So I'm just going to do it now. Last year, can you guess what the spread was for U of A and NAU? Um, it was at see. NAU. Wait, last year for U of A and AU? Yeah. Or it was at oh. home. Sorry, it was at U of A. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, I'm going to guess like U of A minus 17 and a half. U of A minus 24 and a half. <laughs> this is the same thing. So, like yesterday, when I was saying this is not a high spread, U of A was favored by 24 and a half last year. There was no way in hell this team wasn't covering. Um, and, and it just goes to show you. 24 and a half was the spread last year. Let's look at the margin. U of A lost by two points last year. ASU just won tonight by 37. 37. That is almost a 40 point Yikes. difference. Oh. And I like that's the thing. That's the thing that ultimately gets me about all of the U of A fans being like, ASU is not good. They're gonna they're gonna lose to U of A this year. It's like, are you seriously going to sit here and tell me that Emory Jones looks is worse than than Jaden Daniels? Like definitively that much worse than Jaden Daniels? Like, I don't feel like that you can make that argument at all. And I feel like that's kind of the argument you have to be making because it's not like the receivers are, are like, terrible, right? Like, it's not like the receivers are a significant downgrade from last year. The receivers weren't that great. Have a definitely better tight end group, I would say. Front seven, still good. So the secondary, obviously, is a big question. But, like, I, I just don't get it. I just <laughs> don't get it. Can't admit, I can't even imagine losing the NAU. It's um. Yeah, so obviously big game next week. Is there anybody you want to see step up more than they did today? Or is anybody that you're excited to see play? Obviously, Jordan Clark and Demarcus Davis weren't there in the secondary. Um, yeah. Do you think they're going to make that big of a difference? And if anybody else, let me know. Who else do you think is going to make a difference? Uh, yeah, I mean, I definitely think they will make a difference. 
right? Like, I just think they're they're better. I think, I, and especially because you know Jordan Clark is supposed to be kind of like a vocal leader in that secondary. Like, not having that, I think, obviously didn't hurt tonight, but will definitely be a a, a much welcomed benefit next next week. Um, offensively. I don't know. I just want to see a receiver have like that game, right? Like one of those guys where it's like, okay, this guy is the receiver, right? Like I, I feel like it's hard to ask for more from the running backs. Yeah. Like Xavier and Oren Gata, I feel like that's that's really hard to ask for. Um, you, I don't feel like you can ask much more of the offensive line, especially considering that they had one false start penalty. Emery is going to have to play an amazing game, like right, like, and, and we've seen, we saw with him at, at Florida that he's capable of, of when the, the moment is bid, kind of stepping up to that stage, like he almost kind of did against Alabama, like that was obviously a really good game. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think Diego says it, like Nesta. Um, yeah, he but was I good, feel like, but... yeah, I feel like this is how Nesta is going to impact the game, though. It's yeah. not going to be crazy stat sh- stat sheet stuff or type stuff. Like, yeah, he might get a sack or two here and there, but he's there to just cause havoc. Uh, up front as an interior lineman. Yeah, yeah. I I, th- I feel like it's the defensive line in general though. Like I want they need to put pressure on the quarterback. Um, I forget his first name, but Sanders in Oklahoma State. Like he's a four year starter. Like that yeah. kid's experience. He's he's a a good quarterback. Um, and so you, they're going to have to make him uncomfortable. So I, I just want to see any of those those defensive linemen kind of just ball out. I feel like that is going to go a long way if ASU has any hopes of of actually beating this Oklahoma State team. Yeah, um, Low Tone says O line needs to have a solid performance next week, one hundred percent. They can't. I know, they can't have penalties. That's I know. Just a no. Um, Totri's currently at the press conference right now, but Joe said something earlier. He said uh, Joe Whitner in the chat said well, Joey Ramos injured his ankle in Thursday's win over NAU. Blah blah blah. Per Herm Edwards, quote: He's a lineman. He's a tough guy. Hopefully, we'll get him back this week, which is very surprising to hear. We'll confirm that with Totri when he comes back on. But I thought, I thought it looked a lot worse than what. Than, than this like it, he got rolled up on it and by yeah. a big dude like it's like a horse sometimes when 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 it snaps it snaps so yeah you hope- always kind of fear the worst when you see a, an offensive line get rolled up on so um you know it's uh, hopefully it, it looked worse than it actually is and it's also important to note that he is backing up somebody right yeah. like um oh why am i blanking on his name the penn state transfer Jeez, I Who are you completely talking about? Ban- the offensive lineman that Jordan Ramos was playing for this week. Oh, I, I, uh, Isaiah Glass? No, 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 no. I wow, Holy you look shit. that up. You look, that yeah, up. he's the transfer um, from Penn State. I know e- that much. Oh, <laughs> e- Egan's e- Egan saying play calling as well. Um, yeah, yeah I like you said, yeah, but I th- also think it's 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 a um. It's a thing with your opponent, you know. Like you're not going to call conservative players if you're down seven late in the game to Oklahoma State. Like you're also not going to call conservative defense and not get pressure on the quarterback if you're playing NAU and yeah. and you can get coverage sacks. So I'm not really that worried about that. Um, I thought the play calling was okay for tonight. As I said, not some things I really enjoyed, but I, I think it'll be a lot different. Um, and Des Holmes, there we go. Yes, Jesus. Because <laughs> the thing was, in my head, I was like, I know his back, his last name is like a noun kind of. Uh-huh. And I was just like, well, I, I I don't know. I knew, like I said, I knew his Penn State. That's all I could think of. Um, yeah. But, yeah, but with Joey, like if he can play, that's great. But also it's like, it's not like a, a sound the alarms type of situation. Yeah. Hopefully does Holmes is back and, and um, he can plug in. I think the biggest loss for Joey Ramos, if he, if he can't play, is just the versatility that he provided. That we've talked about. Yeah, about, but. being able to plug in a guard, whatever. But yeah, yeah I, I, that is true because one of the first things I said when he went down was if there was any position on this team that would have to get injured, it, yeah. it, it could That's be the line. offensive line yeah. for sure. It's definitely um, the deepest group. Yeah. Um, speaking of, uh, I don't know, speaking of what, but, um, and we kind of mentioned it, but fucking Carter Brown. How, Dude, like, I. I Ah, I I Come wasn't on. too sure like what we were gonna expect from the kicker because it from what I had heard it was kind of like they were gonna ride the hot hand between him and Jace Feely. But yeah, found it. Uh, yeah, we found the hot hand. Like it, it's an incredibly and we had we had seen him at practice. It seemed like he might have been struggling with accuracy a little bit, but like you had said, he was perfect. Maybe in they high were school. just bad days. Maybe yeah, they were exactly. just bad days. It, 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 it was adjusting. You know, it was we yeah. were at like some of the first practices, right? So, but yeah. um. That to have a kicker kick- like that, like that mm-hmm. is Christian's at be- Dejas. Who? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, the the first kick of the game I was nervous for because you got to see that first one yes, go through. It's yes. like it's like breaking a slump in basketball. Um, Craig says, "Does Totri have his own elevator aisle thing?" No, not yet. No, um, but I, I I promise you, I did think about it. So, um, well, I'll, what I'll what what, what would the idea be? If you have any ideas in the chat, let us know. Um, I don't. Do you, it depend, I got to see where Totri sets up, and I got to I got to learn. More I would about assume I would assume he's coming out of the the uh, media room in the tunnel and going straight to the field. So it would be him walking out on the field, yeah. maybe. Yeah, right right past it's, the Tillman statue, two or right? three taking the stairs. I hope he's not setting up at the press box. Because <laughs> oh, then, then he would be in space because, oh my <laughs> God, that press box is way too high up. Um, a couple of other things to mention uh, other than Carter Brown um, was just the special team fumble, kind of. Uh, the one miscue I would say that ASU had uh, was a kind of a bad snap, but also just kind of not the, the punter's fault. Do you make anything yeah. of that, or do you just kind of brush it off on the next? I kind of brush it off. I, I mean, if it becomes like a thing, then sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, mistakes happen. It just happened. It happened in the first game. And it mm-hmm. happened at a time when you could afford to make a mistake, right? Like, uh, hopefully they're a little more, you know, obviously you don't want them ever making these mistakes, but hopefully they're a little more locked in when the stakes are a little bit higher and stuff like that. So uh, it, it goes both ways, right? Like even with how good this game is, like I don't want to get too ahead of myself. They they have to play Oklahoma State next week, and that could go a, a completely different way. So you got to take everything kind of with a little bit of mm-hmm. uh, a grain of salt, I think, in this game. I'm so fucking fired up to see them play Oklahoma State, man. I just yeah. I, I, that's the true test. Like we got first the first checkpoint, which was are they competent? Are they going to look cohesive? And they did for sure. Yeah, for sure. It doesn't matter who it's against. In full, in full speed, they looked good, and that's all that matters. Um, so let's just get right into the final segment because Toe Tree's not coming forever, I guess. I'm just going to do the ASU aftertaste, Sean. Um, I'm not going to be a suspect as Toe Tree. Um, <laughs> What are you stepping on? What what kind of taste does this one leave in your mouth? Um, it's really hard to not sound suspect saying this segment. It, it this is. Segment. It is. But I think um, that's the best way you could do it. I I kind of want to say a golden lager, just like it just is. It 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 gets the job done, right? Like it's solid. It, it's kind of it's just what you want. Like it, it's it's you. We're never gonna. It, 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 this game is just what you 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 thought of like what do you want out of this game? What do you want out of a beer? You crack it open and it's exactly what you wanted. Like you wanted them to just go out there and handle their business. You wanted a beer that just you know tastes like beer and and just gets the job done. That's what happened here. Like they they did everything they needed to do. They weren't trying to do too much like some beers out there can do. You know they try and do yeah. a little too much and it tastes like you're eating a piece of fake bacon. I don't know whatever. <laughs> um, like. Um, no, actually, you know, I'm going to change it from Golden Lager to a pumpkin porter because, wow. like we had talked about at Four Piece yesterday, some you know pump, that it, some pumpkin stuff tries to do too much. It's like sometimes it tries to do too much, but you know, this did <laughs> what it was supposed to do, and it tasted fucking terrific. Like, Josh in the just, chat saying mm-hmm. a blowout stout. This is not the Sun Show. That's not yeah, I know we're not making our drinks. <laughs> yeah, um, no, yeah, th- this one to me tastes like a um, a Shirley Temple. I would Ooh. say because Ooh, yes, but, but uh, just a couple, a couple shots of vodka in there. Cause okay. you know, like a classic, um, a buy game is something that you know is good that you can go back to. Um, but you're a little worried that they might put too much grenadine in it. And you're yeah. a little worried that they might put too much vodka in it. Um, yeah. So you go two different, is it going to be too sweet? Is it going to be too bad? Is it going to be too, <laughs> you know, and th- this yeah. game was the perfect amount of both so asu congratulations on getting the grenadine levels right and congratulations to our very own anthony totry he's setting up right now we'll bring him in in a second um when's the last time you had a shirley temple sean um oh not too long ago probably in like college i would say because there used to be a hibachi spot back home at shirley temples Mm -hmm. and shirley temples fuck like those things are amazing and here he is, the man himself. Oh, it's windy out there. It's windy. We got a dust storm. I feel like a weatherman out here. Wow. <laughs> oh. yeah, Totri, great, great. how was the press conference and how are we feeling? Dude, honestly, like, it was exactly what you thought it was going to be. Emory Jones was, oddly enough, the first guy to speak, not Herm, which was kind of interesting in my interesting. experiences. Usually the head coach goes first, but 
Emery started the press conference with a giant exhale and just kind of chuckled. It was like, man, that was fun, right? And like, that was the energy. That was the vibe, not just the Emery, but of even Herm, the other guys we heard from X, we heard from Chavez Moore. Like, it was just a really relaxed vibe, and it kind of felt just, it felt good for them to get the dub and to do so without having to reveal too much of that playbook, right? First off, if you can't hear me because we got the little tractor behind I thought you were going to get ran over for a second. <laughs> but, no, that was that was kind of the vibe, is they were just excited to get the dub by as many points as they did without having to give too much away. We talked about Daniel Agata afterwards, and it was kind of the same exact thing. 40-3, to three, they didn't have to showcase too much. And, I mean, again, 40-3. to three. Like, yeah. come on. <laughs> yeah, one thing that Sean and I talked about is this was kind of like the baseline. Like, the what needed to happen tonight was for ASU to look like a football team. Yeah. Um, and I feel like they did that, and they did it well. Um, but, <laughs> okay, I'm going to mute I'm gonna meet you for a second. Um, but one, one second, Tony. But, <laughs> but but do you feel like do you feel, uh-oh. Uh-oh. The dust storm oh. got him. Oh the no, dust, the, the I think the lawnmower got him. I think the dust storm blew him away. Okay, I think he's back. Um yeah, we're we're good now. Do you think that this is all you needed to see, or was this game lacking something, Totri? No, I think I think we saw everything that we needed to see. I think we saw everything that we probably expected to see tonight. Um, no turnovers, and they didn't allow. Or no, they did have the one. Yeah, the one, one fumble. The so I'll take the one turnover, but not giving up a touchdown. I think is absolutely huge for a defense that was missing two key pieces in Jordan Clark and Marcus Davis. Yeah, definitely. I, I I was a really big fan of what this secondary was able to do, um, but also the pressure that happened tonight without the without the key guys in your secondary. There were a couple coverage sacks, um, but the biggest thing for me was the interior line. Um, did anybody stand out? Who stood out for me most on the front from the front seven? Would you say on the offensive or defensive side? Of the ball? Defensive side of the ball, front defensive seven. Defensive side of the ball. I think you got to look at a guy like Joe Moore, right? Joe Moore had his time. Again, I apologize. For the it's record. okay. Joe Moore um, and BJ Green really looked the part tonight. They really looked like D1 defensive linemen. They looked like men amongst boys out there against NAU. And that's really all that you can ask for, right? Like two guys that dominated the line of scrimmage. And Trevez said in the postgame presser, like he could tell that they were 100% game planning to get the ball out quick. So that's the strength of the ASU defense, which is that front seven. We just got like motorcycles. We're having, it's like a BMX show. <laughs> no, so like that's exactly what they expected, and they they adjusted, right? Trevez Moore in the defensive line, the front seven adjusted to what NAU NAU threw at them, and they did it early and they did it often, and it, it paid off. Yeah. Um, so. Takeaways from the press conference, obviously, people want to know first and foremost, Joey Ramos, what's the word on him? Is there any update? Yeah, so first first and foremost, Herm joked around saying Joey's not an athlete. Uh, <laughs> like, he's not a skill guy, so he's not going to be, like, running around and stuff. He, he took it back. But so he is in a little bit of a walking boot. Herm called it a high ankle injury. Um, we know those can be a little bit of a lingering issue. The good thing is the only reason that Joey Ramos was actually penciled into the starting right tackle spot tonight was because of other injuries along the offensive line. It looks like the Sun Devils are going to get those other guys back next week. So if Joey needs to take a week or two, it looks like they'll have that room. Uh, But as of right now, it's tough to tell. It's just kind of we'll see how the week plays out. But he is in a walking boot. He was in crutches um, or using crutches. So we'll, we'll just really see how this week plays out for him. Yeah. Um, a, a, another thing that we kind of talked about um, was how good it is to have a kicker. Did they talk about Carter Brown at all tonight in the press conference? Was his name mentioned? <laughs> I unmuted you right when he came back. You're doing your job. I get it. <laughs> For those of you on audio, Totri is being bombarded by a bunch of greenskeepers right now. Oh, my goodness. Did you hear what I said at all? <laughs> I didn't hear what you said. What'd was you Car- say? was Carter Brown's name mentioned in the press conference today Yes, at all? 100%. He said he looked like an NFL kicker. Because he hit, I mean, it, you got to be able to rely on your kicker, yeah. right? 
However, I've said this to multiple media people that have asked me about Oklahoma State next week, right? You look at an Oklahoma State team that gave up a lot of points tonight against Central Michigan. I believe Central Michigan went on like a 37-7 to run. Yeah, they covered. It was absolutely insane, right? But, like, those are drives that you can't afford to stall against a team like Oklahoma State, right? Like, those three points need to be seven points against a team like that or else it's going to get ugly. So all props to Carter Brown for what he did tonight in route to helping ASU put a 40 on the board. However, I'm 100% comfortable only seeing Carter Brown next week for extra points, not kicking and then not, uh, not field goals. Yeah. Sean, do you have anything? Like a 78 point over under for Oklahoma State ASU. Hammer the <laughs> under on that right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested to see what the line's gonna be. Um, I, I was talking uh, earlier, and I, I, I think, I think it's probably gonna be in the realm of fourteen to seventeen for Oklahoma State as a yeah. favorite. What do you guys think? That sounds about right. I would say probably yeah. about seventeen and a half. Sounds about right. Yeah, I would say yeah, like a, a three possession game. I think is probably what they'll predict somewhere around there. So He's I might go a little higher. <laughs> <laughs> I might I might go a little higher than they, you know go like maybe up to 20 or something like that but um we'll see I, the, the, I think this performance against Central Michigan is gonna hurt their their spread a little bit so we'll so w- w- last couple things Totri what players did you get to talk to tonight other than Emory was that it couldn't hear a word you said what players did you get to talk to tonight other than Emory so was that we it talked to Emory we talked to X we talked to Trevez Moore, um, and then we, of course, were the only ones to talk to Daniel and Gata. Um, so we'll have a video on our social, getting you guys up to date on what he had to say, um, what he liked, something that wasn't, that not something that we recorded, but he was really irritated that he didn't get into the end zone. He said he's got to get one next week. Um, but I don't know, man. These guys were just different. They're different than last year's team. They're different than ASU teams that I've covered in the past. Even back to the Manny Wilkins, the Kalen Bellage, there's just a different, there's a different vibe. There's a calm, there's a calmness to this team, and I think that's something that we saw on the field, right? Especially with Emery, like he was calm and collected. People are gonna say, "Oh my God, it's NAU." There was no winning this game for the ASU fans or for this ASU team, right? If ASU wins by 45 points, okay, then they did what they should. Yep. If it's yep. a close game, then it's like, "Oh, what the hell is wrong with ASU?" So there's really no winning this game um, in terms of like a national media standpoint, but like. The win was this team was able to put up 40 points while only allowing NAU to score three. Mind you, this is an NAU team that returned its starting quarterback from a year ago. That was the freshman all-Big Sky Conference last year, right? So, like, that's a big step. Now, the guys in the in the media room, Emory included, talked about how they understand it's going to be a different test next week against Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. So we'll see just how calm and collective you can be in a hostile environment like Stillwater. Like like where you are right now getting attacked? <laughs> Hopefully this Transformer is uh, not going to be headed to Stillwater as well. Todry, before we let you go, is there any final thoughts on the game or the press conference that you have to, to share with the fans? I think the, the one thing that really stood out to me, not so much even with the game, right? Like you guys, have, you've milked the game. We've talked about it. But I really, really loved what I saw from the fans. Right? Like especially the student section. ASU has been known in the past to have a lackluster student section or students leaving at halftime. I get it was the first game of the season for a lot of freshmen, but they packed it. Like it was literally, like it was a, a, a quote that is probably the best to describe it was it was elbow to asshole out here with the students. Like it was, it was there, man. Like they were all there. Now the the alumni maybe the other parts of the stadium weren't as packed. But to have a student section for their very first game to see an ass kicking like this, like that's promising. And it's something that you want to see for those USC games in a couple of weeks or the Utah game. Like it's something to build off. Yeah, it's also definitely expected for a game against NAU not to have a complete sellout crowd. Totri, thank you so much for doing your due diligence and surviving the ground screw down there. We'll let you go. Um, and we'll we'll see you tomorrow. Um, have a have a good salute to service, baby. Great, <laughs> good stuff. Later, Toby. <laughs> was I love the silent <laughs> silent si- sign off from him. Like he was just gonna just fade <laughs> yeah, away. He was he, he was just like do. he was sacrificing yeah, himself like the, for the lawnmower. One of the yes, years. yes. I wish I could do that. Um, all right, <laughs> Sean. Any any final thoughts from you before we get out of here? 
no. I mean, as good as this game was, they're going to have to play better against Oklahoma State if they want a chance. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully, this is something they can build off. They don't, uh, not that I would expect that of this team, but hopefully, they can. They're not getting ahead of themselves or anything like that. Like not getting a little too happy with their performance. Um, it's, it's. I think it is good to hear, like, like Totri said that Ingato, like, as as good of a game he has, he was still pissed off. Yeah. Right? Like he was. He he wanted to do more. Definitely, I think that's a good sign. Definitely think the players understand that this was necessary and it wasn't something that was even in question. They were going to win this yeah. game. It was just a matter of by how much. Um, I see Diego in the chat saying my confidence with this team totally went up for sure. Uh, talking about tonight. Um, yeah, let us know in the chat if you feel more or less optimistic. I don't know how you would feel less, but maybe you do because we're ASU fans. Um, <laughs> if you're more optimistic, let us know. If you'll feel less optimistic, also let us know. Um, we'll probably ask that on Twitter later today. But guys, remember... It's hashtag why not us, and it always is. Um, PH next Sun Devils. Thank you so much for meeting us on Mill. Hopefully, there will be many more to come for the ASU football season. We are just getting started. We'll be live tomorrow at 3 p.m. for a Friday Fun Day show, talking more about this game and maybe talking a little Urban Meyer. Um, who knows? We'll be doing hot or not and all the normal fun stuff. But until then, you can follow me on Twitter at Shane Deef. You can follow Totri on Twitter at Anthony underscore Totri. You can follow the show on Twitter at PHNX underscore Sun Doubles. You can follow Sean on Twitter at Sean underscore DePaz. Um, I feel like I should have had one prepared for this, to be Wait, honest. You had 57 minutes. I What was the – oh, <laughs> man, I had one too. When I, complete, I completely lost it. So I'm just going to say – oh, oh, I, this is a, a reference to a tweet I had earlier. Mm. Himothy. Or Himmery, as always. Nice. Love it. Uh, Well, thank you guys so much for joining us once again. This is the first of many Pac-12 After Dark and AU After Dark. And we'll see you tomorrow at 3 p.m. Peace.